What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the Fox Sports The Gambler YouTube channel. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe on this video, on this page, get things running. Thank you guys for tuning in. We have another night of NBA basketball tonight. We've got four matchups tonight. Three of them close off, close out games and potentially ending the series. And I'm excited to get into each of them before we get fully going. I'd just like to recap a little bit of yesterday. Went five or four and one in the plays. I'm sorry. So four out of five. Uh, number one, we hit on Trey Young over 38 and a half points and assists. He ended with 51 in that game, hit the game winner. Incredible performance from Trey to extend that and gave our Philadelphia 76ers an extra two days of rest, which is huge there by extending that series. DeAndre Hunter also hit on over one and a half three pointers in that matchup. He ended with three on the game, stepping up in DeJounte Murray's absence. Uh, in the later games, we had Jamal Murray hit on over 22 and a half points. He ended with 35, so that one closed very comfortably too. And the Clippers over Sun, the Clippers and Suns over 224 and a half. They finished at 266, so the highest scoring game of that series. That one closed comfortably too. The only one that missed was the Russell Westbrook over 41 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. He struggled to shoot the ball yesterday, and we saw some Russ regression, looking like the Lakers version of Russ. That it is the case. So very uh, disappointing to see that, but overall, a solid days and. Uh, we can shift into tonight's slates. Like I said, four matchups. Number one at seven o'clock, we have the Knicks taking on the Cleveland Cavaliers. Knicks plus 185 on the money line. Cavs five and a half point favorites on the spread. Over under set at 222 or 202 and a half. This has been a hard fought series. The Knicks hold a 3 1 lead overall, and the Knicks really dominating things to some extent. I like the Cavs to, to win and cover at that minus five and a half in this game. Looking at how the series has gone so far, Knicks won game one, 101 97. Cavs bounce back with a 107 to 90 win in game two. Knicks then cruising to a 99 to 79 win in game three, as well as a 102 to 93 win in game four. So Knicks hold that that 3 1 lead. This game heads is, will take place in Cleveland. I still believe Cleveland is the better team, the more talented team. They just have not played like that. And another play that I really like in tonight's matchup is Jared Allen over 21 and a half points and rebounds. That's at minus 125. I love this play. This is my favorite play of today. Where this series is really being dictated is on the boards. And there can be all this noise about how the Cavs lack wings in the roster construction. The bottom line is Jalen Brunson has been the best guard in the series in a, in a matchup with Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell. That should not be the case. And Mitchell Robinson has been the best big man in the series, which absolutely should not be the case when Jared Allen and Evan Mobley are sharing the floor with him. So uh, on the series so far, Jared Allen ended with 14 points and 14 rebounds in game one. He then dropped to just nine points and 10 rebounds in game two, six points and five rebounds in game three, and 14 points and four rebounds in game four. That's just not acceptable if Cleveland is going to get the job done. I think Jared Allen responds and cruises past this number in tonight. On the season, he's averaged 14.3 points and 9.8 rebounds. Last year, where he was an all-star, averaged 16.1 points and 10.8 rebounds, so both well over that number in that regard. And I get this is a whole nother year, a whole nother roster around him, but this is just to prove that Jared Allen is that talented of a player. He should be dominating Mitchell Robinson. I expect him to take this matchup way more personally tonight, and I think that's going to be the difference for the Cavs. So I expect him to cruise over 21.5 points and rebounds and for the Cavs to cover that minus 5.5. Moving on to game two for the night, tipping off at 7.30 Eastern. We have the Lakers plus 145 on the money line against the Memphis Grizzlies, who are four-point favorites. Lakers hold a 3-1 lead in that series. This game will be taking place in Memphis. Uh, the over-under is also set at 221.5. I'm rocking with the Grizzlies minus four in this game. Uh, I'm a big believer in the hungry dogs run faster technique. And this Grizzlies team is not one to roll over to anybody. Their backs are against the wall. One more loss and they're out. I expect them to respond. There's clearly something not quite right about John Morant's wrist. He's not ready to play, but that hasn't stopped him from going out and giving it his all. I mean, he's trying to jump over LeBron, dunk it, and leaving his body on the line. That's infectious to a Grizzlies team that I believe feeds off that and has the, the talent to find a way to win this. While the Lakers are up 3-1, it hasn't been beautiful basketball throughout the whole stretch of it. They're finding a way to get it done, but Anthony Davis has not played well. They still have some vulnerable guys on the defensive end that they can take advantage of. So I think the Grizzlies, this is the game where they step up, prove why they are closer to that contending conversation than they're being given credit. I don't really expect them to come back and win this series. I think the Lakers have put themselves in a great position and can win at least one of the next three, but I don't think it's tonight. I think tonight the Grizzlies cruise and get the job done. Looking at game three, we have another potential elimination game. Uh, that This is set to tip off at 930 Eastern tonight. We have the Miami Heat at plus 460 money line, the biggest dog of the day against the Milwaukee Bucks, 11 and a half point favorites on the spread. The Heat hold a 3-1 lead after the heroic 56-point performance from Jimmy Butler uh, in game four. 
to take them on this lead. The over under in this game is also at 219 and a half. I don't think the Heat can come out and uh, walk into Milwaukee and close this out in five games, but there is something to the Heat finding a way to win. Only 13 teams have ever come back from a 3-1 deficit in NBA history. Uh, the the Heat, the line has sunk down to minus 130 for them to, to win the series, which is shocking to me, just for Jimmy Butler to win one out of the next three. But with all that being said, this is a game I'm staying, staying away from from a, a betting perspective. Uh, it's just too volatile on what I believe is going to happen. I do expect the Bucs to to come in, take control, and really dominate things. I, I think it's very – I lean toward the, them getting the cover, them and this turning into a full blowout. I think this is going to be one where Miami kind of gives it to them that there's not too much of a fight from this roster. I think Giannis takes it personally. I do think the 47 and a half points rebounds and assists for Giannis is something worth taking, but I did leave it off my top five picks for today, which is I'm going to be giving out here. So uh, I, I'm overall, I'm staying away from this game, but I do expect Milwaukee to come in and take care of business and for Giannis to be leading the charge in that. The final game of the night and probably the most entertaining that people will be on the lookout for, the Sacramento Kings versus the Golden State Warriors. Kings plus 100 on the money line as the underdogs. Warriors one and a half point favorites. The over-under set at 234 and a half. This has been a, a blast of a series the whole time. And uh, disappointing news is De'Aaron Fox has a broken finger on his shooting hand. It sounds like he plans to play. Uh, it sounds like he's going to have some sort of, sort of guard on it. So I'm curious to see how that impacts his shooting stroke, if he's still comfortable handling the ball and everything that goes along with that. That's a huge factor and something that I'm going to be uh, watching for. I give him props for suiting up and attempting to give it a go. But that's still a concern. If, and if he's not at 100%, if he's not able to comfortably knock down those mid-range jumpers, which he has done all season long and all series long, and that's really been a difference maker for this Kings team, that's a huge concern. So for tonight's matchup, I will be rolling with the Warriors uh, minus one and a half. The The margin of error for this Kings team is just not very high in this matchup. Uh, they, they have to be nearly perfect in their play to take down this Warriors team. And with that factor with De'Aaron Fox, as well as just some fatigue and everything else going on with this team, I expect the Warriors to get it done. I think they're going to cover that margin. Uh, how the series has gone so far, uh, Kings won the opening game 126 to 123. Uh, Kings then the second game as well, 114 to 106. The Warriors have bounced back for the past two, winning game three, 114 to 97, as well as 126 to 125 for the last game. So this has been a hard fought close series the whole time. It's been terrific basketball to watch. But yeah, I do think the Warriors jump out to a 3-2 lead and the Cinderella story that is the Sacramento Kings may be nearing its midnight, uh, midnight hour. And lastly, in this matchup, I also like Kevin Herter over 14 and a half points. Simply put, Kevin Herter has been bad this series. He has not shot the ball well, but I expect this is a night where he matches up, where he steps up and gets the job done, especially if Fox is struggling with his finger. Malik Monk's another name to watch. Uh, both these lines have been kept. Both uh, Fox and Malik Monk have been kept private for now. They have not been posted publicly, uh, so we will see if that changes. But I, either way, I do like Kevin Herter. Uh, over 14 and a half, looking at his uh, series so far, he had six points in game one, just three of 12 from the field, 0 for 5 from three, 15 points in game two, so did cover in that one. He was six of 14 from the field, two for nine from three, 13 points in game three, six in game three, six of 12 from the field, one for six from three, and just two points in game four, one for four from the field, and 0 for one from three. He's too good of a shooter for there not to be some sort of bounce back, and I just think there's going to be more opportunities with De'Aaron Fox finger bothering him the way I expect him to bust out of this and at least cover the the 15 points. That's not too tall of a an ask for him. That's within his season average and something that he's done comfortably all year. So I expect Kevin Herter to be a guy that answers the call for the Kings and at least provide them with some offense to keep them in it. So. Drop a, make sure to drop a like and subscribe on this video. Uh, drop a comment. Let me know what you think on any of these plays, anything else that you're looking at for tonight. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. You can follow me on Twitter at Sean underscore Bernard one to get me there. And uh, make sure to stay posted for more coming later.